Hey everybody, welcome back. Adam and Gabe from High Desert Hollow here, coming to you from the back porch here at the on the homestead. We've had the we've been fortunate enough that one of our neighbors has had a ton of extra apples. We're gonna actually when it's all said and done, we'll have all the apples we want to deal with. But right now, all a bunch of our trees are still really small, and uh, so they've offered some of the apples they've had off one of their trees that's come ripe and ready uh, to us. So what Gabe and I are going to be doing today is. Uh, we're going to be making applesauce, plus a little bit of extra bonus on the side as we get some apple juice off of it is too, off of it too. So what Gabe's going to do here is he's going to show us kind of what he does, the steps he goes through to uh, get this process done. So stay with us and we'll uh, have Gabe show us what he's going to do. So what we've got here, if you've never seen one of these, this is actually a steam juicer. It's a three-part system. you got the bottom pan. You've got the juice compartment, and then you've got the <coughs> colander portion here that goes underneath the lid. That's where we actually put the fruit. And this is actually beneficial for lots of different things. We use it for making apple juice and slash applesauce. We use it for making grape juice. We use it for making uh, juice off of choke cherries when we pick choke cherries out uh, in the hills to make syrup out of that. Uh, about anything you think you need to juice plant-wise this actually works pretty well and then it leaves you sometimes it'll leave you uh, pulp that you can use for other stuff like is an applesauce and what we're doing today so uh, and how that works the whole thing works by uh, this heats up at the bottom and it's steam and then the steam comes up into this chamber here and it it actually ruptures all the cells in the fruit or whatever's in here and then it allows it to drip through this colander portion, which is this section here, down into the juice compartment in the bottom, and then you drain it all out through this hose here into containers. So what we're going to do now is Gabe's going to start loading it up. So Gabe, tell us what you're going to do there. Mm -hmm. Put the apples in here. Yeah, you're going to put the apples in there. So go ahead and go ahead and start doing it. Here, let me see that. Okay. And guys, we don't have to be real picky about these apples at this point. If they're bruised, uh, they're okay. We don't want to put a lot of leaves in there. Uh, Gabe will pick all those off. Uh, if we got, and if there's a really bad one, one's really bad and starting to turn rotten, we won't put that in. But like I say, the bru these are all windfalls that fell off their tree. They're not pretty apples, but they are delicious apples. They're a Lodi variety, uh, great for sauces and juices and stuff like that. So. We're, uh, you can put that one in. So he's going to get that loaded up, and we'll be back when it's loaded. So Gabe, what do you got there? Mm, the lid. The lid? What's it? What do we? What do you got over here? Apples. We got it all filled up, huh? Yeah. So what? What's going to happen? What? What's happening now? Mm, it's heating up. It's heating up, huh? Yeah. Then, and that makes the apples let go of their juice, huh? Yeah. Do you like the apple juice? Yeah. Pretty good stuff, huh? Yep. Cool. So you've got it all loaded up with apples. Um, what do we got to do now? Mm, wait. Wait. We need to put the lid on and wait, huh? Yeah. Yeah, guys. So go ahead and put the lid on, Gabe. And see, now the lid's not going to fit all the way on right off the bat. We'll just actually kind of set it on there like that. And it's going to catch that steam. And as that, those apples, it only it's only going to, They'll sit here for probably an hour, hour and 20 minutes, uh, breaking down. But within the next 20 minutes or so, the apples will have, the steam will actually have come up through and it'll actually make all the ap apples swell and rupture. And then they'll start to break down as they drop the juice. And that lid will actually settle right down on top and it'll finish its cookout period. All right. So, Gabe, so what are we going to do now? We're going to let it cook, right? Yeah. And we'll, what we'll do, guys, is we'll bring you back and show you part way through what it looks like, and we'll go from there. All right, guys, it's been about a half hour, and let's have Gabe show us uh, where we're at with those apples. As you can see, that lid is settled down. I haven't touched it. It's just kind of sat down where it's supposed to go. So, Gabe, why don't you go ahead and carefully pull that lid off, watch, and make sure you don't get hit with steam. Good. There you go, guys. Look at those. Let's see if I can zoom in on it for you here. There you can see those apples that were once uh, nice and big and plump and all that. The skins have ruptured and broken. They're starting to 
collapse down as it's releasing those juices and uh, it's going down into the juice compartment below which we're getting ready to drain here in just a minute. Okay everybody go ahead and Gabe uh, go ahead and squeeze that clamp and see if we can get some juice out of that. There you go just like that. Lots and lots of apple juice. There you go guys that's about the first drain. Um, that is a three liter juice bottle. Uh, we just save our juice bottles from different stuff for this part of the process. It almost filled it, uh, well, almost two thirds probably on the first drain. Uh, it, when they, by the time we get done processing these apples in this juicer, it'll actually fill that bottle completely up. And then we'll move on to the next step of the process. Okay, so now we're Finished running all the apples through the uh, steam juicer. We've had probably 10 batches run through there. And now we got a couple big pots of apple mash, The what's left over, this cooked apples. Uh, what we've got here is a Victorian strainer. It's what we call it. I think that's pretty much what it's widely known as. Basically, it's a food mill of sorts. It will auger the apples through it, through the, you put them in the hopper. Gabe, show them where the hopper's at up top there. Mm -hmm. is Gabe cranks the handle and pushes the apples down into it. It extracts all the pulp through the fine screen and puts the rest of the seeds and the core and the skins and the stuff that we don't want out the other end. It's a great way to get this applesauce. Uh, we all really enjoy it. You like it too, right Gabe? Yeah. You like applesauce? Yeah. Yeah. It's a good thing it's as hot as it is, otherwise Gabe would be eating it as it can't come out of the Victorian strainer. So, yeah, that's it. There's some applesauce. Now that's all there's going to be left to do after we get done processing all these apples is to get it in quart jars, get it uh, sealed up and on the shelf so we have it for throughout the winter. It's a great product. Uh, like I say, it was just a, we were fortunate one of our neighbors had a bunch of extra apples. We were able to utilize them. Okay, guys, another thing you need to be concerned about and just uh, watch real close, especially if you have real young kids helping. Gabe's pretty getting up there. I trust him. I'll let him turn him loose, and he'll actually do the rest of this applesauce stuff. But these apples, after they come out of that steam juicer, are extremely hot. Um, I know when I was a little kid, I was helping make an applesauce, kind of like Gabe is, just younger, and uh, got a little crazy cranking on the crank. For the Victorian strainer, had it come undone, come off, land on my leg, and burn me real bad. So just keep that in mind. If you are uh, have real young kids helping you, this that part could be dangerous with the hot apple mush. It's a uh, it's kind of like lava almost. Okay, so that's kind of making applesauce, uh, and we got the apple juice as a byproduct as well. It's a great way we feel to uh, go ahead and use some of those excess apples that aren't don't look as good or pretty, and if you get extra ones from neighbors or whatever, if you have an excess of your own. We kind of went through the steps, and Gabe showed us what he does to go ahead and finish this process out. Did you have fun making that applesauce, Gabe? Yeah. Yeah? You like it, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gabe volunteers to help with the, using the Victorian strainer and stuff all the time. He's a he's a pretty odd kid, but we like him. We like him a lot here at High Desert Hollow. So, anyways, we're just here trying to live a more self centered lifestyle and promote modern homesteading. This is Adam and Gabe with High Desert Hollow signing out. Got anything to say? Mm, bye. See you later, guys. Should we test? Yeah. So you should smile at the camera. Test, 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 right? Say something. Hi. Hi. What are you looking at me for? Look at the camera. 
we're uh, it's uh, end of August, first September. We've uh, had the fortunate. Uh, gosh darn it! What is my problem? I don't know. You don't know. I don't know either. It's above it now, huh? What do you think? Think it's above it? I think. You think it is? Hey everybody, Adam and Gabe from High Desert Hollow. Welcome back. Okay, I know what I'm going to say. Ready? <sighs> Smiling? You looking at the camera? Alright, you happy? Yeah. Alright. Does that sound better? Okay. That actually sounds really good. Really good? Yeah. All right.